Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the final and hopefully exciting conclusion of Game 3 between Team Dignitas and Navi. I am Luminous, and of course, I'm joined by Eternal Envy for the Streamhack semi-final coverage. And of course, uh, I think we're going to be done with Dreamhack after this one. I'm not absolutely positive, but if there's any more great Dreamhack games, please let us know in the comment section below, or you could tweet at Eternal Envy or myself. Uh, but back into this game, we do see very similar heroes coming out from Na'Vi. Gyrocopter and Rubik, I think that's exactly the same two picks that they got last game. And now Darkster and Jakiro, same thing again from the last game from Team Dignitas. We talked about how Darkster is one of the most crucial hero for Team Dignitas, but let's switch up gear and talk about Gyrocopter a little bit. He's a hero that got nerfed, um, Black Cannon, by 10 seconds extra time, but it seems like teams are actually picking up him higher and higher. We do see a little bit more uh, higher of a frequency of playing him a little bit more early game. We see more drums, BKB, Shadow Blade, but it just feels like no teams really care about that nerf on the flat cannon. They just pick uh, him a lot the of same. teams do care. It, it just He's that Navi, Navi and Liquid still value him though, and I think the right the, he's a a really strong um, team fighter, and he's really tanky. He starts off as a range carry. He starts off with a lot of armor. And he has a pretty good HP, so he, he, the items he buys, he just need to buy damage items. He just he can get away with buying like HP items mm -hmm. and still wreck face, so he can still push really easily. Yeah, to me, he has a lot of interesting property that a lot of I guess casters as well as players simply forget. First of all, his call down goes through BKB in terms of the slow, the damage doesn't, and that's really good against a lot of BKB carries that relies on like their melee range BKB. So we saw Shadowfiend last game. If you get a slow in terms of him, his effectiveness is dropped lower a lot. For example, uh, we see Dragonite BKB quite a bit, and again, same story there. Secondly, I think Gyrocopter has deceptively strong laning ability. Um, even though he's one of the strongest, a, yeah, he he just beats a lot of solo laners. I'm not gonna say he's at the level of things like Batrider or Lone Druid, but he beats a lot of solo lane that you don't expect, like a 350 range squishy hero to beat. But he does it, so that's why we do see Gyrocopter still being first tech by you said Navi and Team Liquid was it? A lot of the Asian teams also like Orange, uh, the Chinese, Zenith for example, they pick him up very very highly. So, well, I guess. The nerf is not enough uh, for this particular hero. Well, he, he's fine though, I think. Is he fine? Oh, I think it's fine. Are you still not complaining about the gyro divine thing, or? Oh, that thing is annoying. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't agree with that. That's all. I, I feel like there's been teams that have, do not deserve a win as much as the other team, and they simply won that game just because they bought a divine or gyro copter. And as exciting as that makes the game, I mean, there's a bunch of silly shit you can do to make this game more exciting, but. It's not necessarily the most fair. Okay. Fair and a enough. team that plays better should win this game. Well, Navi, very similar situation to game number one. It's going to be banning out uh, Morphling, Doombringer, and Spectre. And again, Team Dignitas banning out the junglers because, well, they got one for themselves, which is the Enchantress. Um, they left Enchantress in the pool, the way that this is drafting. And what, what particular reason do you think that they would prefer Enchantress? over something like Enigma, which I think gives them better team fight, perhaps even better push. Well, Enigma can get a freaking Thunder Creep and send a middle. That is so, so true, I guess. <laughs> like, like, what the hell, man? That's not enough reason? You just pray? You pray that, that that's the first camp that spawns and you just win the mid lane for, for he, He's much better for the early game for ganking potential. Yeah, His farming speed is uh, the fastest of any jungler, I think, in the world. When you say Enigma? No, uh, Enigma is faster on Dire, I think. Enchantress is faster on Rain, it's Why? slightly. What's the big difference there? I don't know, I just tested it. The level 6 you you get by 4 minutes, 3 minutes 50 seconds to 4 minutes and 20 seconds on Enchantress, and Enigma is always past 4 minutes. This is like perfect stacking AFJ jungle, maybe even fire a Walken and then tornadoing yeah. it? Yeah, and I learned how to farm from Thing Toss, so. Oh, okay, so maybe we should play a closer attention to... Well, you're just gonna get a Thunder Creep though, and you're just gonna send a middle, so all that, all that goes out the window. <laughs> All right, so Team Dignitas <laughs> looking for Sir Solo mid as well as Sir Carry Row. Any particular guess on what that might be for AUI or for for uh, sneaking? Naga Siren. Did you see the replay? Well, or are you just like two seconds. Well, they, they didn't ban Naga Siren. In the, yeah. They ban they ban Naga Siren the first first game. Uh, and I talked about how Naga Siren works well with um, Dark Sir Girl and Dark Sir. Yeah. And AUI does not play Naga normally. He is not. The same Naga player as any other Naga player. I, I play Naga like him too, but I might not know. But he does not go drums, he does not go Manta, he does not go Diffuso, he does not 
get early game items and look for early game fights. He plays them um, like the scale of ten of like of how annoying a hero can be. If anti mage was a six and PL was eight, Naga would be a forty. What? And like, this is the guy. Wait, okay, wait, wait. This Does will be the most boring game you ever watch. I think. Yeah, yeah. He goes radiance, and all they do. You see, splits <laughs> send every illusion to every single lane, and yeah. just just farm. I used to do this too, because in the past, like, um, the the illusions do a lot of damage, and they have, uh, you can get by coin on them, right. and you can farm really, really, really quick. But with the damage nerf, nerf, it's, it's actually so dumb. Like, to farm with the radiance, you have to like move them around because they can't tank, and they can't they can't actually hit the nerf. So they just have to consistently move them around and kill them slowly with the radiance. And even though it's doable, it just his, her early game fighting potential has been nerfed so hard with the nerf on his, her damage. Right. That getting radiance first generally is really dangerous, but he's he, he can still get away with it. So, disclaimer. I might be speaking on my, I be speaking on my ass, though. Like, uh, he, disclaimer. He might, he might just get drums. This could be the most boring game that you've ever seen in your life, but I'm, I think that... Well, the most interesting game you'll see, too. I mean, after after that insane 2200 CS on PA, I think my viewers are... are I've trained my viewers to watch any other game and be it like, was yeah. that horrible game? <laughs> this, this, <laughs> Ancient Apparition being four picked up by Navi, and I don't think we're going to see any X after AA here, so don't get your hopes up, but there, there could be. Um, Why not? That's uh, Dendi plays AA in mid a lot. That, that used to be in TI1, and we don't see a solo mid hero at least right now, so yeah, it could uh, be. I'm actually expecting a Dendi mid. Hey. Yeah. Um, I just don't. I think Puppy is an AA player. That, that's ours, our hero. I, I just think that, sure, Acceptor is a great team fight item, but when you have 4 staff, when you have all the mobility, and you know Dendi, he, he loves his mobility items. I just think that it gives you better team fight, especially against a sleep setup that, like, you guys are going to be fucked by a vacuum ice path and all that stuff. So, if you somehow are not caught by the vacuum, then it's going to be effective, right? Or useful, at least. Uh, the AA eggs is always going to be the most stupid. Like, if you get on a Rasta or AA, it, it just does a lot. Mm -hmm. But, um, I, I just feel like it costs too much, and there's... AA mid trying to form a freaking eggs, like, what do you do in between that time? You just feed. You ice blast with ganks. You, but you feed. You can't farm anymore, because you have to farm in the lane, and if you go into the lane, you have, like, you don't do anything. Well, let me, uh, let me quickly ask you the question. If Ice Blast lands on Weaver, when he backtracks or time lapse, he's gonna be completely fine, or is the buff still on him? I think the buff is still on him. But he gains all the HP back, right? Just to double check? Yes. Okay, okay, good. But I don't, I don't call me on that. Well, we're gonna see it this game. I'm pretty sure it gains HP back. It's not actually gaining HP back. You're actually literally going back in time, and not taking the damage, you're not getting healed, you're just... You, yeah. should, should you remove it? I don't know why I think you don't remove it, but... You, I mean, you remove dust and stuff, so... But for some reason, A Blast just doesn't seem like it removes it, for some reason. Yeah, the Ice Blast is definitely, like, a, a buff. as hell. Yeah, it, it's a buff that, that just don't go away. Well, Navi's is complete out of time, they're gonna go oh with my the God. Lycanthrope. How? That, that, that's a puppy hero. Yeah, that's a puppy jungle Lycan, and... That's a hero that don't jungle at all, and... True to Puppy standard, we always see him getting completely under level and under starved early on, and that's ex that's exactly what I would be expecting coming out from Lycan, this particular game. So, yeah, very very interesting. And Snake King's gonna be playing Weaver solo mid, and I gotta say Weaver is just gonna have such a matchup advantage over Ancient Apparition. Is that correct to say that? Mm. Because when he Sakuchi's in your face. And when he gets yes. Gemini attack, you have better base damage, you have better base armor compared to AA. How does AA even... Like, sure, you could just, like, Kofi. But he's Dendi. Can Dendi beat Lightning Creeps? Better yes. Get ready. Oh, no, 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 no one beats Lightning Creeps. Okay, alright, just... You, 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 you can send five heroes middle and you'll lose. Okay, good, That shit's fucking imbalanced, man. It's like, four sign Kunal, 150 damage, infinite mana. Let's keep it clean, like, you, you can win two lanes of that. You, you can win mid lane instead of top and win that lane, too. All right, Navi Funding is going to be going up top to scout things out. The wolf is going to be falling through. He's going to be playing the clockwork. Then he is going to be playing the solo mid ancient apparition. Havos playing Jarkov through three games in a row. Kuroki on his really, really famous Drubik. And last but not least, Puppy on the jungle. Like it. Meanwhile, Demon Toss checking for the Roshan because, well, there is Lycan on the map. Uh, AI 2000 is going to be playing Naga. Fog is going to be playing Jakiro. We have Universe handling the Darkseer as per usual. Um, Snake King playing solo mid on Weaver. And last but not least, 
Uh, Who was the last person? Enchantress is being handled by way too sexy. I think Funny is going to do the Dark Trick. Do you know about the Dark Clock Trick? The, yes, uh, where you block it over here, you make these creeps go into this little tunnel, and then he stands there. I never personally... It's really good. It's... What does it do? Tell you, us. It, it gives you experience. Does it? Because when yeah, you're... Yeah, because you're... The first... If you send two creeps in, the two creeps will always die to the four creeps, and you're always going to get that God. wave of experience. Here's so two... The first wave will get it for sure. Here's my thing. Here's my question for you is... Um, when you're denying two creeps, that's cool. What if they're denying four creeps? Because they could easily do that. Pull down the first wave. He's not doing it. That's oh. First oh, did that work? Can we watch that, please? Oh, let's go back. Like, did, did they do that trick? Wait. Oh my god. We're, 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 we're going back in time because I missed the first blood as well, which I'm not sure if you care. This is, not, this is pretty amazing. Let's go back. Alright, I'm at uh, 1255. 1255. Uh, okay, go. 3, 2, 1, go. Look at what Ross is doing. He, he, Universe can't see him. Was only a matter of he can't time. see. He literally cannot see me. What the hell is this? What do you mean you can't see him? He didn't see he didn't see Kuroki, you mean? Did you see that? Folks. See what? A voice killing the universe. Yeah, I'm seeing it. He, he, he stood behind a tree. Universe didn't see him. There's a tree there blocking. Like and then he, you mean he on the low ground? He wasn't on the low ground, he was on high ground, and he can universe couldn't see him. Who's him? A voice. Oh, Vos literally walk up the hill. I have no idea what you're talking about. He can't see him. No, he he wasn't. He didn't walk up the hill. He walked up the hill and then he stood at the tree. Oh, like right next to, right on top of the hill next to the tree. Yeah, and uh, universe couldn't see him. That's some next level spot. Yeah, and he blocked him too. And and he went search. Yes, he was forced to get search. And now that's the he's, thing I want to point out. What did he's, he do now? He he's done, right? You lose, right? There's already like after me. You can't. You can't answer me. <laughs> Say accent. Well, I, I don't know. What do you do as a level one? I don't know. I just pause the game and, and try to calm down my teammates, I think. <laughs> and, 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 and claim that, like, I don't know. You bought two chickens? Ask for a roommate? Kaipi style? No, no, no. I, 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 I pause the game to try to calm down my teammate and, like, claim, like, my hands are cold or something. I'll eat one minute. Well, Universe is actually just done in this lane because. He actually can't even get into the EXP range, and if you're asking why, yeah, he could walk in and he could try to search himself out if he gets in trouble, but if Kuroki is smart, he is gonna just reg, uh, what you call it, up, or lift him up when he is, um, yeah. Look at mid lane. I think he got tornado. He got a uh, tornado creep and lightning creep. No, he just got nothing. I don't think he got tornado, because tornado, if you look at the model oh, no, on the wild there, there, There's a tornado there. The other one. There's two tornadoes. Oh really? You got two yeah. of them? Well, that's that's cool. That's fair. That's beatable. It's not no, really beatable. Level. Why is Stankin getting that run? It's a regen. Ready yeah, but he just lost like one, four creeps, two, three creeps. Okay. Um. Okay. I guess it's okay. Losing three creeps to get a regen run. Then he's on four right now. Then he's actually using. This is the thing I haven't actually looked at. Solo mid chilling touch? I always believe that chilling touch is not worth it if you're just casting onto your only one person, but apparently Denny disagree. Level one chilling touch, in the same base damage, outlast hitting against a weaver. Yeah, but what, what, what would you do against, with Kofi against a weaver? I guess so. Good point. Like, your mana is better spent at chilling touching, I guess. How's the other one? Universe. Oh no, he has no experience. <laughs> Oh my god. Can he just, for example, like jungle the Chantress till he hits two? No. It takes too long to walk back, man. You're not gonna walk back and. He's got Surge to walk back? No, he don't wanna do this. Just, just stay in the lane. Just keep Kuroki away, I don't know. I mean, he's making sure that Kuroki's not getting a lot, but. Okay. Swarm's gonna get dropped here on the mid lane. Dendi still haven't put his two skill points. What do you think he's saving it for? Like, you're just gonna go Kofi, right? It just does more damage. I... Is he gonna... He wants stats. He oh, has some under 20 XP. Oh, snap. I guess. You know, the one thing that I've, I've learned about playing a ton of AA when I was writing my AA guide? You actually don't really mid even... Mid-gank. What? Mid-gank. Yeah, I'm watching. 
Uh, you actually don't even need to level up a ton of your spells. Why is he walking away? I think you could just net him. You can net him. Then he does he not see. He's hiding. I, well, he got saw right now. Where's the net? Where's the net? There well, is a net, well, but yeah, it's not going. Yeah. He has 700 HP. He has stats. Well, <laughs> Wait, he's like, dude, he has stats. Can we? Like, what the fuck? No, I don't think he said he has stats. Got back off. The center wasn't in enough range. In range to get the saw. No, I, I think I think Snakey would have ran past tower and went from. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Universe still level one. He's actually got half level XP. Puppy coming out here. He's level three. Puppy's actually leveling higher than your Darkster. I think the strategy is gonna be a big issue coming out, or this not strategy, but the way that things are working out here for, for uh, for Dignitas is gonna be an issue. How is I mean, Naga Siren? This game is gonna be based on staking, and how staking and unless I get this tower, maybe then they'll be okay. Because what they're what they're trying to do is buy time for Naga to form a radio, mm -hmm. and. Then, Farm to Lake and Universe is one of the reasons to how they're gonna stall because if a Dark Star gets levels, he split pushes really well and he has a mech, so he's good at team fighting, he has a wall, so he's good at base defense. But with a level one Dark Star, they're gonna be, they're gonna rely on how Snaking is gonna handle the split push, I think. Ice Blast gonna fly through the bot lane, that's gonna actually do a ton of damage coming out AI. AI getting a little bit low using the, uh, the mirror image is split. This is not generally your standard build coming out from Naga Sign, correct? You definitely max the Riptide first, but is he? Um, you max the Lucians or Riptide. Right. It's well, considering the fact that he's not really killing anybody on this bot lane, because Clockwork's always gonna stay back. I guess you're getting a little bit early illusion. Is there any benefit to getting those early points of illusion? Uh, they're much tankier. The the illusion damage doesn't matter as much as the tankiness. Okay, and. I mean, you're not really gonna kill anybody with those illusions. You're, you're definitely not pushing too many towers. I guess they got one of it. You either stack camps or you just camp them at the neutrals and spam. Okay, that's fine. And, uh, well, AES... I don't. I don't know though. I, I generally don't get it this early. The illusion. I, I max illusion before net, no matter what. But which some people don't do. It's it just doesn't feel like it's a good use of your mana, right? Like early on, you rather spam Riptide because it's just more effective in terms of taking down camps and whatnot or, or just taking out waves but yeah he's got two two one two right now which is I think I write home about but just a little bit definitely a little bit interesting staking bottle crawling away and dendy well he's still he's if I didn't know better right this is like the, the anti mage stat bill almost like it's just like one point of each now it's slowly leveling up cold feet he's got the ice blast is he just straight up farming yeah, for an axe after he's also not doing anything snake he's not doing anything oh uh, the, you mean Dendi's farming up yeah. tanks? It could be. Um, they have to um, have aggression earlier, I think. With, with the Darkstar not having levels, you, I think you really want to not let him catch up. Darkstar's level 2. I'm not sure how he got to level 2, but back in the middle here, Dendi's going to get Ice Path. Oh, and well, that. here comes the Lightning Creeps. Unfortunately, the Sun is going to come on Snaking and Teleport going to come in. Oh, the Ice Blast going to hit on top left. Fable coming out here, and they're gonna try to focus on way too sexy, but they can't. But here comes the dive coming out of Kuroki. Kuroki's gonna give up one kill, and Dendi trying to kill that bug. And this is why this bug is OP. Where's the lightning? The lightning not being micro by way too sexy. Snaking trying to go for the dive, but he's not going back in. He sees Spunic. The Kofi hey, is gonna come in stacked. against Fog as well. What's that? He got fucking stats. He think it's stats. so stupid. He, think he, it's stats. he can't die. This is so dumb. Well, I think that the lightning creep was a little bit better micro. I think they could have because yeah, he wouldn't have died. He's at 350 now because he was able to bottle up throughout the team fight, but he was actually... he, he, he was at 250. Well, a lightning creep is gonna do like 100 something. A Sakuchi is gonna do a little bit more, and then Snaking is gonna time lapse out like a pro. Radiance. No, he didn't manage to do that. He wouldn't have died. Well, you could say that I got Dendi. I could make a signature now with, with that. Kill. He got he got stats. Dude, this is legit. <laughs> Solomon A with stats? Now imagine you throw a uh, living armor on top. Then what? Then he just off farm him. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Now he can out farm AA chilling touch. Like they got this this completely planned out. Okay. Um so Jarl has 60 creep kills and AUI has 46. Radiance. It's happening a lot. Hmm. Do you think AI is just missing more CS? Like I mean Jar uh, they're, they're both missing CS, actually. Naga Siren has one of the kind of the shoddiest, you know, base yeah, damage. Yeah, he has a really hard to offset with uh, Naga. So. But this host, last hitting photo player. You you mentioned black. Uh, black. There's a diff difference between fastest farmer mm -hmm. and fast last hitter. Because last hitting only comes to the lane. 
Right. So you don't talk about last thing when you when you when like forty minutes into the game. So black is definitely generally has more G GPM because of the playstyle and stuff. But when it comes to last thing, even though black is extremely good, a Vos is just a monster. So it's more like decision making in terms of getting getting farm where not getting caught, and then eventually still maintaining your farm to end up with the highest. And, and team play, like how your team plays the game. Right. When Navi plays, they're expecting uh, Havos to come to a lot of fight early on. And because of that, he doesn't have as much room to farm early on, or uh, later on, right? Uh, yeah. Or, or at least that has been uh, Navi style a while cheap. back. I'm not they, sure. Their Garo generally has a lot of farm, actually. Because of uh, HS stacking. The Radiant got one less yeah, we'll tower. Meanwhile, Gyrocopter, speaking of his, has pushed down tier 1 tower. They're gonna try to make a gank on the mid lane, but... I know, yes, that's stuff. <laughs> Alright, man's got stat, but is, is that enough? He's gonna... Oh, he's gonna drop an Ice Blast, but... Yo, that stat's not gonna be enough. It's not gonna be enough. That was a pretty nice gank coming out from uh, Dignitas. I think they're gonna try to get the tier 1 tower. The rocket's gonna be slowing them down, but... Uh, we'll see how much damage they're gonna do. They don't have uh, Liquid Fire just yet on the hero. There's a Glyph gonna be used as well. 15 seconds till... Uh, Dendi comes back alive. The rotation is going to come from Kuroki, who is level 6, as well as Lycanthrope. I think Kuroki looking for some spells to steal. Getting Enchant actually would be pretty decent, because you can still Enchant just creeps and slow down. Mm, look how AI is playing right now. He's sending his illusions to farm the lane while his hero is walking around. Do you, do you think he expect a teamfight to break out in the mid lane or something? No, he just he was farming neutrals. I, I generally do this as well. I, I like my hero to be farming the newts. Over illusions because the neutrals give more experience. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit too early to do that right now, though. He, he can't really kill the neutrals. Yeah, I don't think he has enough damage output to be yeah. honest. He, he just missed a lot of levels, actually. Because even though he was lasting pretty good with his uh, level 3 illusions, mm -hmm. um, he wasn't there for the experience. That's unfortunate. Well, Funic, is he going to be okay? Havos well, is higher level than him now, but like almost a level level. Well, I mean, Havos also um, wasn't sharing as much EXP with his support, right? Uh, AUI was, they were pushing a lot earlier, AUI was forced to rotate a little bit more, and we saw Kuroki coming to mid lane cope multiple times, and Lycanthrope wasn't in the lane, so yeah. maybe as a byproduct, um, you know, Gyrocopter got a little bit more XP, but forget about XP, let's talk about gold, or well, maybe not Ice Blast coming on the bot lane, Rocket's gonna fly through as well, oh, call down, call down, Solid Siren, the hook's gonna hit there as well, man, just sharp shooters on Navi, every single nuke hitting. Oh, the hook is actually gonna be a big deal for AUI this game. It, it's one of the spells that can cancel his uh, sleep DP combo. Oh, he could just come in from afar, and even though the clockwork will sleep after he hook himself in, he just canceled the TP and yeah. he's gonna get caught at the end. That's a good point to point out. Tier 2 tower, or tier 1 tower in the little I bit think of this game is looking really bad for Dana Toss. Why is that? Well, the, we talked about the Darkster, and he, he doesn't have anything yeah. early on. And the Jowl is. He's so far. Well, snaking, you say he has to do a lot, but... <laughs> well, he thought he there was no security. Lifted, Medallion, bursted down by Rocket Barrage, as well as right clicks, and the push will resume. Naga Siren is back, but unfortunately, he doesn't have Solemn Siren either. Three minute cooldown early on, where you're not level... I, I don't think they can fight this. I really don't think so as well. Ice Blast is gonna hit. They do lift a Fog Dota as well. He is gonna be the Sacrificial Lamb. Drax the Macropire, he's done. Oh, wait two, you gotta be very careful. Sakuchi 4 here from Kuroki. Medallion's gonna get cast and wait two. Also gonna go down. Here comes Illusion from the Naga Siren, but... I don't I, think they... Oh, he hooked? He missed though. Block or uh, I don't know, not about that hook. That was bad. I think they should've chilled out with the mana usage. Mm -hmm. And they should've just camped the bottom lane repeatedly, so Naga had nowhere to farm. Because all I need to do is stop them from farming to win this game. But now that they are low mana, they might have to heal. And then Naga's gonna have some room to farm. But this Havos, he's so firm. This is like insane. He's insanely, insanely firm. He has almost perfect CS and then the Asians so is four stacks. And he has two towers too. His, his GPM is so much higher than AUI's. Well, tier one's gonna TP on the bot lane. Whoever, oh, oh gotta cancel that TP. Oh no. Oh, well, they do have Snaking coming back in, but Snaking's gonna get lifted. He's gonna have the time lapse. Oh my god, that was too close for comfort. The rocket is gonna slowly follow to AUI. The rotation's gonna come in. Is that an Ice Blast? Is Ice Blast gonna hit? Ice Blast gonna hit on anything? No. His, his GPM's almost. His net worth's almost double AUI's. This, this doesn't make any sense. Why not? He's getting a lot more kills. AUI's been dying. AUI's been missing a little the, bit. Last the the Asians haven't even been killed yet. He's gonna. He just has too much right now. Well, you talked about him not missing last hit early. I guess he's definitely showing that. Almost 100th last hit. In about... 11 minute BKB. Yep. It's finished. He... Also, he has a face boot. It's not like he yeah, just... Lo... Yeah, it's like way faster than what Dendi had last game. Dendi's like got a double kill in, in the bot lane. Uh, 
last game as well. Huh. One thing that I, I didn't point out, but if you watch very closely on Havos, especially in his level 1 last hit, you see that once the Crete Wave get under his tower, he would drop his Wraith Band and then yeah. hit the... Because his damage is closer to 65 if you don't drop Right, that's one thing that you talked about last game, and that's how you kind of could artificially control it. Sometimes if you have a Crawling Blade on your melee heroes, you last it, you have a better chance of lasting under tower by dropping those Crawling Blade. I know it's completely counterintuitive, but... That's... I don't think Avos is a math player, though. He, he is, um... He's, well, the only math players, math carries are me, TC, and AUI. Um... He doesn't click he, on the creeps to check their HP and stuff. He just... He's just insanely good at... I'm not sure what it is, but I my eyes will never detect the 1% difference between the creeps HP, but he can. I think instinctively, after you play the game enough time, or after you had last... You it, really can't. You really can't, no are you sure? Black, Black misses last all the time. When I played on team alone, I had to tell him how to last it. Like he, he expected me to tell him every time how to last it under a tower, because he trusted me more than um, his own ability to look at things, and same with PowerNet. But this is the only guy I know that will... It's just so good that when I look at the map, it's actually almost perfect. Well, he's definitely having the last set to, to prove it. And of course, if you look at over Dendi, he's not going for that Acceptor that uh, we said he's not going to go for. He's going to be going for the Mecha, which is completely, you know, the better item in my opinion. There we go, keep on farming. I feel like because they have such a big lead, you talk about the 11 minute BKB, the mech is almost done on, on uh, AA. I really feel like they should pressure towers a lot more than they have been doing. And you know you know exactly what you guys have been farming for. He's got his relic right now and finally he's gonna have his radiance. But I feel like because they have such a big lead, they could have got a lot more. And they're not taking advantage of it. I don't I, I kinda of disagree. I don't I don't think they should be looking for a lot more. I think they should have just been camping the bottom jungle. Why why do you say that? I mean Like they should be like camping the bottom jungle while gaining the mid tower slowly. Because all the, the only thing they need to do is keep the Naga away from getting farmed. And he, he's, he's still been farming the jungle. But now he's going to be running top. Yeah. Well, I'm actually surprised that I just look at the gold graph right now and it's only leading by 2,000 gold. In terms of towers, Navi's up... Uh, actually, the, the tower is completely even and they're going to try to get themselves a little bit more tower. But you talk about Hovos. Having 3,000 lead in terms of uh, GPM, but I guess, you know, Enchantress that's, uh, or, or some of the other heroes that's in the jungle that's really falling through. And Puppy definitely not as fast as a farmer. Finally, they drove everybody away. They are going to get that tier 1. As a result, though, AEI's got himself a ton more free farm. I say a ton, but it's only like two extra waves. So, he's very close to that Radiance. And once he does have the Radiance... The speed farm, his farming rate's going to go crazy. I just want to say, like, a Battle Fury being picked up on Anti-Mage doesn't even rival this. Like, nah, it's, it's, it's... no. Are you are you sure? Like, you farm three waves? It, no. And the jungle no. at the same time. No, the, the Anti-Mage is always going to be faster. I, I, I've, I've tried GPM records over Nagel before. The highest I've ever got was like a thousand. It's not... It's not that. What's the highest you've ever gotten with uh, Anti-Mage? Uh, 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 one, 250. 1250? Yeah. Okay. It's just solo kill though. Well, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if AI how he's gonna farm. But uh, I, I kid you not. Uh, the, the problem is like you don't the, the anti mage. You end up getting more levels, so you end up faster fa farming faster with those levels. Uh, whereas Naga doesn't get the experience for most of the creature kills, so he doesn't actually get that many levels. Makes sense. That makes sense. I remember this one pub game I play, and I guess you know, quoting pub game, especially in a situation like this is. Not so good, but started game 0-5 Naga, got got owned on the tri lane, offensive tri lane, and then I uh, was like, forget it, I had no items, went drums, and then into like a 35 minute radiance, and literally just, the enemy team can't push in, sent illusion every wave, and then timed it with Riptide, and moved the micro, uh, micro delusions around, and every creep wave just dies. Age is gonna get picked up here oh by Naga. Uh, they're so behind, like... I, the Intoss is so behind. If they get that HN stack too... It's only 4,000 gold, it's only 5,000 experience. Naga sucks against Jaro. Sucks. It is a... Naga can all carry a lot of heroes in the late game. But Jaro... I mean... Jaro just crushes Naga. Because you... 
Nagcat has zero damage potential uh, except for illusions. She doesn't have any buffs. Like, she doesn't have any plus damage, she doesn't have any plus attack speed. The only thing she truly gains is the Diffusal Blade plus illusions. Clockwork hooking into mid lane here. Ice Blast is going to connect on Fog and Fog. It's going to do it down. Nice vacuum here, trying to bring them back into the cog, but not going to work out there. And tier 2 is going to be going down. I mean, I'll, I'll ask you a little bit more about the draft later if we even have time. There is some Radiance being finished. Navi's going to actually go back and defend both top and bottom. We're talking about clean pushes coming out from Alliance. Navi, I, Navi I, think, I, think, I don't think this is clean at all. I think Havosh should TP bottom and two, someone should TP top. Uh, they, swap they the wasted, TP. First off, they wasted two TPs. They TP two bottom, one of them canceled. So it wasn't planned, obviously. Mm -hmm. And secondly, I think Garo should TP bottom just because Asian stack has been sitting there for like a year and he really needs to clean it. Uh, yeah. But let's talk about the draft. You know, you talk about how Naga's being really an easy counter hero uh, by Navi's Gyrocopter. Gyrocopter got picked first. Naga came later, so... I know. They, they might be playing it differently, though. They might just be lame. Which is, I mean, what that's what Danatoss is going to be. Like, in, in the scale of lameness, it's always going to be 10,000 times more NPL, the way they play it. They might not be looking for fights at all. Unless, like, the opponent gets... Unless Navi gets weakened heavily. Right. Well, you say that Dignitas is not going to be looking for fights, but what yeah, if... That'd be lame as hell. What, what if Dignitas... Or, sorry, what if Navi just comes straight into your base? Like, you talked about Darkstar being really slowed down. He is going to have his mech finish at 20 minutes, which is very, very slow. Is that enough to defend the base? The, the, the thing is, like, the... Um, the... the Jakiro and uh, Darkstar is going to just be lame. Uh, defending the place. But more, more importantly, that snaking is just unkillable. So he's just gonna split push. So the whole team and is gonna Naga's be is gonna split push too. And the thing with Naga is that you can always keep the lanes pushed out. Because whatever lanes they're not in, you can just you, even if your hero isn't there, you can still keep it pushed out of your uh, illusion. So it's gonna be fairly easy for them to split push. Whether they can take a straight up engagement, yeah, they right. cannot, unless Havos yeah, like one runs in and feeds or something. Well, we talk about uh... yeah, look, he can't push. Like, yeah. look at that. That's all lame. Speaking of split push, we do have a little bit of action at top. They want to focus on snaking. Snaking gets lifted up. He's going to backtrack. The ice blast is. Oh! If they just did it a tiny bit better, they would have got the kill. But as it stands, two hero rotate a bot. Not going to get anything done. Why can't he still didn't kill? It's yep. almost. Like, if you look at the draft, there's just almost no way they can kill him. It's so hard. If, if you hook him, he just time blasts all of the hook and then just runs away. I think the like, only way they can actually kill up to him is to lift him up with Sakuchi. And then right during that lift, they got to actually ice blast him. Like, the ice blast has to hit there and then kill them during that lift. But that's it's such really a, hard. Right, that's such a small timing window and guess exactly what universe is doing to that. You you were you were talking about a split push. He draws a TP back and he's just gonna run away. There's really nothing you could punish him. They're not defending so. right now. They're, in fact Kuroki Kuroki might be in some big trouble here. No he has a cookie. No he has a cookie. Oh okay okay he's, he's, he's also okay. invincible. Let's well, think it. well the, the tower doesn't have Sakuchi. A three team toss member focusing on it right now. Kuroki trying to get some plays, and unfortunately, tier one or tier two is gonna come out on us if they don't get a rack right now. Well, they're trying to. They're breathing on the high ground. Here comes the Magpie, burning down every single creeps. I, I feel like Navi is panicking. They should have defended the mid tower. There's, there's no way they can push this. Yeah, melee. They, they can always take this late game with the Garo versus Naga matchup. With all the illusions just die. And then they don't do, and he doesn't do anything anymore. Naga does nothing, like literally. Like, what, what does a Naga do? If a Spectre alone can hit you with Desolate or something, or as a Dispersion. Naga, what do you do with Naga when you don't have Illusions? You sleep. Yeah, but what do you do in, the, in late game? You got me, man. You got me. Like, I played this here. This is like one of my most played heroes. Like, his, her damage output is so insane, but what about the Illusions? Her damage output is nothing. Any possibility of saving your mirror image until the call down and flag are used, at least the first flag? Yeah, that, that, that's that's going to be how you need to flag. Maybe you can even, um, when he, when he presses the flag, can you just sleep and then you just wait? No, it lasts like 15 seconds. No, you, you run away and then you re-engage. Or, or you could just flag in the mirror illusion, so... Yeah, you can do that too. Yeah. But he's not exactly tanky right now, so... But, of course, in the late game, he's going to be really tanky. He's going to get a mantle, he's going to get a heart. And look, he's he's keeping his boots on. On uh, no more right now. He he knows this game's gonna go late, or at least ideally, if they win, yeah. it's gonna get, have to go late. And there's no point in upgrade right now if. Uh, and he's not going fighting items at all. Yeah. No defusal, but he's just gonna save for a uh, box. For... Like this, this is so AUI in terms of his item purchase. Doesn't matter if Yasha or is it's a poor fight. Oh my gosh! Right? Net the courier. Net the courier. Net the courier. Yep. 
Easy mode. Yep. Do you know? Did you see what exactly was on the courier? Today? Yeah, MKB. Oh my god, that's three minutes without MKB. And, and, and Axe. And Axe? On who? Yeah. On Funic. Uh, look at top now. Nice glasses. Navi is falling apart. They're not handling the Swift Push. They don't have the heroes to kill anybody. They're, none of the heroes can kill anybody. None of them. Well, this kind of reminded me of the game between EG and Virtus Pro, where Virtus Pro's heroes. I, I kind of remember talking about the team fight not being that good. This, this is. I don't want to say a similar situation on Navi side, but it's like you said, they they just can't kill people. Whereas Virtus Pro had nothing hero or hero, nothing but hero that kills people. They do pick up Jakiro in the, in the jungle right now. Um, that Shin stack still hasn't died yet either, by the way. That's, that's why aren't they killing it? That's also the big question for me. I think they're rushing too much. I don't think they should have. I, I don't think they should have traded towers. They should have just protected their own towers. You don't want to. You don't want to give the mobility team a tower trade. Now, now there's like more room. Like there's a bigger map to walk across, and. The bigger the map gets, the better it is for the Reaver. The Naga with naturally high movement speed and the Surge. Yeah, Naga 315 base. Absolutely no joke. And uh, well, Lycanthrope's definitely doing a, a good good job at you know, farming across the map by himself. But you know, he's got to be somewhat careful here because here comes uh, here comes Snakey with the double damage. Is Puppy okay here? He's gonna, no, he's going to run out. He's always have his ultimate form, which was on cooldown during then, but it's fine. Finally, Kuroki's going to stack this one more time. We are gonna see the Havol's TP in, yes. This, to me, had to happen like 10 minutes ago, I wanna say. I don't even think he timed it properly either. Because his jungle wasn't cleared and it's gonna respawn. He should've cleared his jungle first. I, I really do feel like that one time where he should've TP bottom, he should've done it that, at that time. Now, now, instead he's just gonna give a lot of farm away to the Naga Siren who's in his jungle. Instead he would've cleared, he would've cleared it himself. And then he maybe could've token nations later. <coughs> But now he just gave away a lot of gold to the Naga. Speaking of Naga, he's got 2,500 gold. And yeah, I, I think this is going to be what he keeps doing. Sending Illusion one camp to another. And it's just really annoying. I, I guess now watching him kind of slow, passively farming. Take back what I said about the uh, anti-mage. Uh, but definitely, definitely getting his farm though. Getting his farm. He's up to 190 CS. He's slowly catching up in terms of net worth. Because of the big pile ancient stack here, we do see Jaro still staying very far ahead. Let's quickly check out in terms of item. We are going to see a Dendi Axe Scepter here on the Ancient Operation. Not a really rush one, but Mech First is definitely not a bad way to go about it. Funnick going to be going for Axe himself. I'm not sure whose Axe was killed on the Courier. I guess we'll find out in just a bit. Blink Dagger up on Kuroki as well. Havos, BKB, and now going for MKB. And last but not least, Puppy's got a ton of items. If you look at just the item alone, you'll say that Navi's got way better items, but... I still think they're ahead now. So. Yeah, they are definitely ahead. I mean, look at the go chart, look at the experience chart, but it just doesn't matter because it doesn't matter if you're ahead by go if you can't use that go in a team fight. Yeah, if, if you can never force the issue, it doesn't matter if, if you're stronger when the issue like happens. Right. And right now, uh, Dignitas, on a scale of annoyingness, is that what you said? They're 40 out of 10? Yeah, 40, yeah, 40 out of 10. Look at Snake he's like, oh, stop. Nice. A river. I think that maybe if Dendi senses how this game is gonna go, I think the better item might be actually Hex on Ancient Apparition. Well, this is the problem with picking Ancient Apparition at all, I mean, like completely. If they had a Quap or a Puck and he had a Hex, he didn't blink any Hex, but now it's like Ancient Apparition with Hex. It's like, okay, I'm gonna walk up to you and Hex you. How's that even gonna happen? Well, I mean, it's still better than an Ancient Apparition Acceptor upgrade, right? I just don't know what Axe it does for you. Like, I guess if you hit call downs and hooks and, and cogs, that's gonna do it. Like, you're gonna win a team fight. But if you hit the cogs and call down and the regular ice blast, I think that alone will win you the team fight. Like, I don't think you need the extra damage. Look at the map right now. Look at the splitting. Where Navi is farming and where. Like, Navi is grouped. Of course, they're at Roshan right now, but they're somewhat grouped up, whereas Dignitas is spread all, like, all over the map. It's just so ironic that Dignitas is down in terms of kills and gold, but they're farming way more aggressively with their hero because they can. Like, they just are, like you said, farming at the more portions of the map. And the Roshan's gonna get go down and it's gonna go to Havol's, but 
we'll see whether it matters at all. We see the rotation coming in from Kuroki. Oh, Kuroki's gonna be dead here. Swarm's gonna get dropped, but I don't think really get these carries. Guys, they are gonna get one kill. Here comes the rotation coming out from Navi. The rocket is gonna hit on EI. They got easily multiple ways to get away from this. The sleep hasn't been used yet. It's got the Manta, so it's moving very quickly. Havolt is just really gonna chase for it. It's gotta be careful. He turns around, and that's gonna be it for the engagement. Are they gonna go now? I don't think this is the right choice. Why are they pushing? They, sh they should have spread out and formed their own jungle. Now, now once again, AOI is going to form his, their jungle. I I really think they're rushing things too much, and they lose lost bomb tower as well. Yep, it was... Uh, and because right. Havos doesn't have a TP score, he needs to walk all the way back top. I mean, he might even lose top tower. They, they're not... They're not reacting properly to the split push. They really aren't. It's just... Too rushed. Too... Too messy. Ice Blast not going to connect here on snaking and he's working on this tier 3 tower already glyph being forced out and eventually that tower is either going to get denied or destroyed and i don't really care i don't really think that that thing tower cares either way dignitas does have a mantis out finish on the uh, the weaver gonna pick it up uh, mantis has been long time finished since naga siren up to another 2700 goal bots They're on what the fuck bots that is really bad i think really bad i, I mean course. On, on on one end, do you think he's saying you know, like you we need can't... a butterfly and you need to push now? What they don't understand, like, Navi aren't Naga type players, so maybe they don't understand how Naga works. But Naga doesn't do shit. He he doesn't have a defuse of what the the defuse of what is like too expert and rapier and damage. I mean, this item in a sense helps you push, right? Because you could push out a wave like on the top lane and you would Wait. prevent the split push, and then the rest of your team four push mid, and then you teleport in, right? Isn't that the idea behind the Beach Travel Purges at this stage of the game? That, that, that's his idea, but the butterfly is so important. It, it, it's not that difficult for them to just push out some of the two of the lanes and just go for it. I don't know, man. I, I feel like you could push things out, but it's so dangerous to actually run, run into the Weaver by yourself as well. So you got to be very careful in terms of how you select your push. And Well, speaking of that Weaver, he's pushing out bot. This this is a very slow and grindy death, and uh, well again, nothing to defend them, so we just rival or not. Here comes Snaking, he's working on your tier 3 tower. Meanwhile, Naga, actually he's just backstabbing on the mid lane. He's just pulling the creep wave away. Where's your creep wave to push, guys? There is no creep wave. This is so freaking annoying. Holy shit, that scale is going up. Man, 40 isn't enough, I think. Look at this illusion, he's just, like, he's just like running across heroes. This is like a freaking chess game where you're down pieces and you just like you have a king and you just walk it away consistently and even though you can't like have you played those games before yeah yeah i guess a noob well i wouldn't call i wouldn't call uh, navi a noob right now but they're definitely in big trouble ice blast gonna hit the hook as well that's the team fight perhaps they're looking for jacaro's gonna get melted immediately meanwhile naga siren on the run he's got the song he's singing right now everybody oh oh no slinking being big or not slinking fun again being trouble he's gonna get picked off but that's a, that's a trade that Dignitas will really take buyback coming out from Kuroki. That's a two for two, but Naga survived. Yeah, but now, now they can push though. Now they can actually push. And if he had a butterfly, I would say this game would have been over. Like, I, I think right now if they push, the Jaro is so strong with the butterfly. But with the bots, the Eagle Horn doesn't do anything. It's actually so useless. Well, he, he's got the Talisman Evasion on the chicken right now, so if he gets this tower last hit, he's gonna get the uh, the butterfly. There's a glyph being forced out, these illusions slowing down. I do want to point out that if you look at AI's micro, he's not sending in all the Naga illusions at once because a single AoE spell will burst him down. But Volsa's gonna use his Aegis right now and well, uh, give him a little bit of damage as a result. I'm not sure about just giving away for free like that was good. I'm not sure also how much time he had left. Maybe that, that was a consideration. He had a lot of time. Okay. Then I'm not sure about that. Glyph is down though. The wolf are gonna be coming. Blink Glyph here on universe. Gotta be careful. Does have wall, or excuse me, does have vacuum. Focusing on Havos. Havos dropping the call down. Gets called up in the tower. Tier four, tier three tower is slowly whittling him away. I think the tower's gonna get destroyed right now. Yeah, tower gets denied here. BKB is gonna be used on Puppy. I think once the BKB and ult form is down, I really don't think. Now. Yeah, they have to the back. Uh oh, and here comes a chase of uh, being featured by Snake. Uh, I, I, I don't think they're gonna actually fight us if they. Totally there's fight. no reason for them to fight this, right? Yeah. Well, we'll see. AI maybe she's gonna try to initiate with Sleep. He doesn't have it on cooldown. They can focus on Havos. Havos is low. Havos forced to pop the BKB. Buyback coming out on Weaver. Chasing really deep. The wall's gonna get dropped. Any vacuum? No vacuum just yet. Looks like well, the wall was actually being stolen by Kuroki. Puppy low. Puppy's gonna get picked up by just an Enchantress. Meanwhile, the chase is going the other direction. Havos very low himself. Meanwhile, AI. Following Funic, gonna get a kill on Funic. 
There is a butterfly bit finish on Gyrocopter, but AI is getting way too much. He's got Boots Travel himself, and oh my god. I, I, I feel like if he had a Phase Boots and Butterfly right now, the, that the Gyro would have easily taken that tower and maybe gotten the Rex as well. I, I, I just don't think they're handling the situation properly on Navi. And now it's going to get fairly bad. The Diffusal Blade is one of the big turning points when you play the Magus Iron. Well, and now he hurts so much. Well, you just said that his illusions don't do anything, right? Yeah, so... but now he can kill people, like, when they're alone. When you split push, you what you, what you want to do is try to beat out as many heroes as you want, right? Right. Like, to, to stop your push. And what the enemy wants to do is try to defend the towers with the least heroes as possible. But now that illusions do a lot of damage soon, he doesn't have it yet. Which you want now, though. Um, if you send one person at Naga, Naga will just kill her. Net, Purge, send illusions. Dead. Yep. Well, that's definitely a very concerning issue. We do he see uh, Dendi on the melee 2500 go, so very close to finishing his Axe Scepter if that's what he wants. Any consideration of... Like, now that they defend it, you see the rotation coming in from Navi, you just go for it right now? Uh, Snake King is bottom, though. I mean, Snaking can't push as quick as you. I think they have the exact same line as now. You can see Havos teleporting back mid, and yeah, they're, they're just going for it. Now you do have the Butterfly on, on Gyrocopter. Snaking not really pushing as quickly. He wasted Battery Assault. That is weird as hell. Oh, the current is pretty low, though. Oh. Well, here comes uh, you know, They blink, they live here, they focus on Fog. Though the Vacuum's not going to hit on everybody. Hulkin, that's going to hit enough. Nobody's focusing on the racks. The Ice Blast is not going to hit too much. Your puppy BKB is being used. It has ran out. Universe is going to run back into base. And now it's going to be a pick, easy pick. Unfortunately, puppy is going to get netted by the Naga Siren. And all of the focus is going to go on to him. Have they gotten the melee racks? Yes, Havos not joining a team fight. Got the racks. And now he's going to be, his ally is going to be cheaping to defend the bot tower as well. That push. That was pretty good. Yeah, really good. But I don't think they should have died for the puppy or the clock. Maybe the clock, but the puppy, I, I don't understand why they have to realize by now that they don't have any stuns, right? They, they, there's no way they can catch anybody. Well, I'm they not would sure. not have died, for sure. And there's no way they could have stopped Havos from getting the racks. Their team fight is so bad. Are you sure? I mean, yeah. they could have easily, like, slept and set up, set them up, right? No, the, the wall was already used. He just walked away from the wall, and then if they sleep, they can't vacuum him into the wall. Oh, I see. You, you really can't fight the Jarl. Well... Even though it might not be the cleanest play here coming out from Navi, uh, by Havos, or not, yeah, not Havos, uh, by Puppy running around in the base, forcing people to fight him and hit him. Uh, gave more than enough time for Gyrocopter to take the racks and also survive. So He's so farmed, like this Jarl is... He's ridiculous. so farmed by selling a phase, but you gotta keep in mind, also getting booted travel, so yeah. like... Finally, we see the Ice Blast being finished, or uh, Acceptor upgrade being finished. One thing that I haven't been really seeing too much is actually Ancient Apparition using his Ice Blast continuously to slow down that uh, split push. I feel like that's one of the weapon that they could have take advantage of. If he hits that Reaver, that Reaver just almost dies, right? Uh, he has Backlapse, or Time Track. So. Uh, 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 I guess that's too hard. Yeah. Um, you're, not, you're not gonna... But yeah, it does do like, I don't I wanna say like 1700 damage. Look at the number of words on the map too, by Navi. They have zero. And all their wards are done. And they have no wards on their heroes. Holy shit, what happened? Does it matter if they don't have this too matters many wards? matters so much. Because if they can... Radiance top yeah, Ice Blast, like hits. people farming their jungle and stuff. Well, I mean, the way I see it, Navi's gonna be so much on the offense anyways that they're always kinda, you know, constantly pushing and pressure. Back in the mid lane, you talked about that you need the purge play. Or once he gets the purge play, he's gonna be solo Hurts. killing. And that's exactly what we see. Saving the net to cancel TPs. Whenever I see Naga Sirens out of mana, in fact, well, meanwhile, Team 5 breaks out on the top lane or pick hey, That's a pretty well. important kill. Does he have buyback? I'm not he too sure, but it doesn't matter though, because AI, a swall staking, is pressuring for Raxus right now. Can you trade for Raxus? I'm not too sure. He does have buyback. They are going to TP back. They are going to get some mana. Calldown's going to hit. No, Calldown's still oh, going to hit one. Wait, uh, wait, two, wait, two's on the run. He forced half himself away. Meanwhile, Body Puppy again. Diving. He's not going for. He's not going to get these kills, but it doesn't matter because they're biding a ton of time here for Havos and the rest of the team to get those racks as Puppy. Got to be careful because the ones that BKB ends, no, he's going to be fine. He cannot purge him. It doesn't matter. Havos got to be hitting that tower. I'm not too sure why he's hitting. He's hitting on way too fast. Way too is actually very tanky. Don't hit the heroes. You got to hit the buildings. Oh, he gets Persian up and these illusions, it's just going to kill him. The net's going to be on top. The swarm's going to be there as well. Ice Blast is going to hit. AI might actually die. He's going to buy back, but 
He does. Does he have boots to travel on cooldown? He does. He does have boots to travel. Meanwhile, the snaking on the bot has gotten the melee racks. They haven't even got the racks on the top. They haven't even got the got the tier three. I really don't think Havos should have been focusing on the tier three tower all the meantime. He he ran past the tier two with 500 HP. Did you see that? Like at the end? Yeah. Where he died? The location to where he died? That was so weird. He was getting shot by tier four towers. And yeah, they, they lost the racks too. This. This is just really weird play. Oh. I, I, I don't even feel like they should have pushed at all. They should have just TP'd back, secured their tier 2 mid. I mean, is that anything happening right now? Okay, he, that guy's invincible. So they should have secured their bottom towers. They should have secured their mid tower, and they went for the Roshan. Why did they, why did they even push at all? I'm, I'm not sure, man. I, I think- Because the Roshan spun. Yeah, the Roshan is back alive right now, and you can see that Snake King and the rest of the team trying to force over it. These Naga Illusions, goddamn. It's a DD rune on freaking in immortal person. Well, that DD rune is going to be running out in about 15 seconds. I mean, we do see Clockwork trying his best to kind of be as annoying as possible. But the biggest annoying factor is this Naga Siren, because now with the Reaver, he is so damn tanky. Just Illusions, they are so damn tanky, and he's farming every single wave. One thing that you do have to be concerned about is that there is a Boots Travel in Gyrocopter. And the back door could happen. We also saw what EG did with the Lycan throw. They farmed a uh, boot trap on him, and the back door could really easily happen. So that's I think the Lycan in the previous game was way more farmed than this, though. They had a, he had a book three. He had really good back door items. Yeah, he did. This game, though, a different story. Naga moving up the high ground again. That's okay. He's spending illusions everywhere. Every time I look over AI, he's constantly like down mana. Which, that's kind of what you expect out of the block. Yeah, he doesn't go soaring. That's gonna be going for a nice push back here, but the Ghost Scepter, it's gonna get bursted down. Ice Blast is gonna hit us. Well, double kill on heroes that, well, oh, uh, but are they gonna fight this? That's a big question. The Illusions gonna be here. Flat Cannon is down, so if this there's a time to fight, that could be it. But at the same time, they are down still two heroes. Everybody getting himself mech up. They do have to give away the free Aegis. Does the Aegis really matter though, or do they? Here comes Illusions pushing everybody back, the Cog's gonna get destroyed, they really lack the damage, and here comes those Illusions. Nice path, the Cogdown's gonna be used, a Song of Siren, they're gonna go for the steal, I think Roshan is not really low okay. enough. Where's the wall, where's the vacuum? He's surging across the map right now, and here comes the Ice Path. Not really hitting Fog, Dota's gonna get burst out, the Magapire not on top, the Net's gonna hit on Puppy. Uh oh, gotta be careful if you're Naga Siren, speaking of Naga, out of mana, you never gets lifted up. He's gonna get burst out as well, what a focus fire coming up from Navi, still a good team fight. Great fight coming out from Navi. In fact, they killed him. He, he also has bot back. He's out for no about 50 seconds. Bottom, Who's TPing bot? No one's TPing bottom. Also, you gotta look at the tier 4. In the yeah, base. someone needs to TP bottom. When you said bottom, let's look at here over here. I, yeah. The, 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 the tier 4. Yeah, the from, tier 4. From bottom. Like. Well, they're, they're gonna get in, do a ton of destruction over here. They're finally gonna get the Roshan, but the clock will cook in. Oh, that's from Funny. No, yeah. That was a really. Word engagement. I guess in the end it was kind of worth it just because they got the tier 4 and almost got the other tier 4 as well, mm -hmm. somehow. But I don't think Danatos had the right idea. I think Reaver should have been bottom already, and they should not have even tried to fight that. There, there's no way they can win a fight against Navi. Navi is insanely strong. There, there's no way they can win. In a, in a straight up engagement, they always have to weaken them, and they weren't gonna weaken them with just sending in one illusion every now and then. But this is not enough. But in the end, though, I guess that's fine. They, yeah, I mean, that, those tier fours died. If, if Navi had any one TP back at all, they didn't need everyone to fight. They just needed one person to go back. But and at I think that it was situation, a huge mistake. At that situation, when you're being challenged by the Roshan pit by a Naga sleep, it's counterintuitive to me to TP back. And but two people already died. That's true. Yeah, it so dark it, it, it was then that you can TP back. There's no wall, there's no Jakiro. You can TP back. Well, in any case, they didn't TP back. And even though Dignitas, like you said, it was a really weird fight where they kept charging in despite down a couple of heroes. What ended up happening is that they provide so much long-term distraction that the creep wave was able to push in uh, on the bot that's, lane. Th that's huge because yeah. now they can't, they, they, they're scared of backdoor. You can't, if they had tier fours up, they can just go suicide for the front. And they probably would have won. But now they can't suicide for Frones anymore. Because if they go on a throne, a throne race, they're gonna lose. Navi is gonna lose a throne race. Yeah, Navi is gonna lose. They, if they throne race. Well, they do have a Lycanthrope. Unfortunately, he doesn't have book 3, so split pushing is nowhere near uh, where it needs to be. Naga Siren is. Naga Siren is actually coming from the dire okay. side. 
needs some work. The vacuum, the walls on top, but here comes the Naga sleep. It's gonna be focused on Kuroki. No, he wants fun at first. The, oh, he does have a cheese. He pops it right now. And now switching on Kuroki. Kuroki is dead. Ice Pap is gonna be used. Oh, look at Poppy doing a ton of work. Really insane damage output from him. The BKB is gonna be running out. The Ice Blast is gonna hit. The Centaur Stomp actually somehow got way too sexy. Haste it on Puppy as well. Where's the net? Net coming in. And I do believe Puppy's gonna die here. He is gonna come back alive, but unfortunately, he's in human form. So all you need is one stun. In fact, you even need stun. Call gonna be used. Stomp's gonna be right there on Puppy. He's low. He's gonna be dead. Hovos is now gonna be fighting. He does have Satanic, but you really can kite him all day. He really needs support. Where's the Naga Siren throughout all of this? Naga Siren getting surge up. He's trying to apply the uh, purge. Oh my god, there's a purge. And that's gonna be it here for Hovos. That's gonna be a full on team wipe. Or close to it. Then there's only one person alive. Can he hit a magical ice blast? That could do it. That's gonna get at least get one kill on Universe. Gonna get a kill in Enchantress. Probably even- he, he sees it, he sees it. Oh, does he got a regen room though, so. He might get Universe, Universe is done. Oh! Oh, no! Oh my god. Well, here comes Aoi. I, I don't think anything's gonna happen. I can sit there for 28. He doesn't buy back. Look at look at AI. He's not even care on the middle lane. He's gonna go on top here. He's gonna get hooked. The cogs are pushing them back, and AI yeah, might as well right click those illusions, getting dragged back and forth. Gets lifted as well. Kofi's gonna be thrown on top now. Lift him back. I mean, AI is so tanky. Gets forced back back out though. And now snaking is he gonna be focusing on the Raxus. He doesn't need to be purged. Now goes on Funic. Funic is gonna be dead. I don't even know how AI finds his mana, but there's one more kill. Now they're gonna be focusing on the Raxus. Here comes the TP with the Lycan throw, but has any tower damage has gone on the mid lane. BKB's gonna get pop here by Hovos. Gold Scepter immediately coming on way too. Yep, he's not gonna be dead as well. Ice Blast is gonna be flying in. Ooh, it eh, barely grazes on uh, snaking, and they all will try to TP out. They let the uh, AI. Yeah, he doesn't have mana for oh, that Oh, Nega would have died if they just Nega, but they don't, I don't think they realize that he doesn't have TP mana. Yeah, That's actually a huge mistake. Well... And bottom too. Like they need to... They need to... Place a ward or something. If they can't figure out the, the equilibrium, they need to... They need help. They need a ward. They need something to, to spell the equilibrium. Because they're... You, you can't lose your throne like that. The throne's getting hit by creeps. Well, there we go. Tier 4 tower is going to get destroyed. Enchantress having uh, enough buyback, oh, I imagine, just from that tower kill. It's and here we go, AI. Continuing to be. Have you seen AI in a team fight? I, I mean, actually, he has been, but like, it's just. What's team fighting? You have Naga. Reverend. <laughs> you don't team fight, right? That's the. Uh... No, you don't fight. You lame. Oh, they are definitely. I, I don't. I don't want to call it lame. I. I actually like the strategy that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do it too, though. So. I like how you're like, oh man, this is so lame, this is annoying, but oh yeah, I'm good. Yeah, you, you win, you, you, you play to win, it's up to Ice Truck to fix these things. <laughs> you know, I mean, the pros are always gonna pick to win. I, I, I am a huge PL anti mage picker in real games, so. Are you, are you gonna be a tree, big tree picker as well? Oh, we picked that a few times. Yeah. There you go. We're still done in the game, but you know, still pick, still win games. Yeah. Well, what they're thrown as empty right now. Yeah, and what, two what? creeps, two creeps got it down to 3,000 HP. Literally two freaking creeps hit it. Well, it does have 3 HP regen per second. That's the only thing saving. I'm as shocked as you are. My question is, what does Navi need to do to get themselves in a winning position? Because... Uh, uh, Rape, Rape Jaro. <laughs> it always comes down to Rape Jaro, doesn't it? Yes. But here's the thing for me. Is it going to be effective this game? Because... Yes. No, like yes. satanic BKB. BKB is already not enough. I think if you satan, if you see him satanic, you just sleep, and then you just focus him. What does he do there? Cause your team don't have any like hexes to stop any DPS. Your team doesn't even have four staff, I don't think. And Navi has no four staff. If he just gets netted and focused, Bush just dies. Satanic is not gonna save him. I have no idea what they're to do right now. To be honest, right? They they they, they should have kept their tier four times, both of them. Should have been full HP right now. They should have. Also, There's a lot of things they did around this game. Also, I don't think Divine carries him back because BKBs at four seconds. You could just, just net him and run when he BKBs, and then once the BKBs down, you could just have blade mails, right? So like. Oh well, yeah, you could. I don't think they're gonna do that though. Okay, that's yeah, fair. But you're, but you're right. So I just don't think I just don't think how Navi. I, I'm not seeing how Navi could win. I, I'm not seeing it at all right now. Like this is. If you look at the gold chart, it's like almost zero. Right. 
An experience chart. Well, Nega doesn't get any experience, but he, like, she kills Cup Streets. That's actually a huge deal. That's why she's always very under level. Like, I was level 25 and Naga's level 20. These, these Naga illusions, all of them are just coming in. They're getting pushed back. They're getting cooked. They're getting Fable. Finally, her Volt's gonna clean everything through. But this base, there's a, a big gaping hole. And I, I cannot imagine how Navi's feeling right now. This game. This is awful. Yeah, it just go and back to the mid They might lose to a North American team that he claimed they can never lose to, by the way. Did they ever say that? Uh, all, all the Russians think very lowly of the North American um, land. Ex well, except for EG. They think highly of EG. Well, but they here's do not. the thing. If, if they do end up losing this game, right? Navi fans and Navi themselves, or Navi fans particularly, are they going to ask, did we lo really lose to them or did we just got out lamed? Because this is. This yeah. is pretty messed up, Dota. But. Uh, I, I, I'm surprised that Navi fell apart like this to split push. Split push is one of the most common tactics nowadays. Because as, as teams got better at Dota, they know how to play it to the edge. And that's what happened with split pushing. It, it is multiple Butcher Travel coming in on Invisible Wolf. What a freaking ninja gank. He has an E Blade. Bottom. Who has E Blade? He's in their base with E Blade. He's hitting their throne. What in the actual fuck coming out from Snaking? Snaking is gonna be doing some work. He's gonna get lifted up. He does a backtrack here. Here comes AEI as well. The Luge is gonna be coming up. Everybody's gonna be focusing on the throne. That's gonna force out Glyph here. Puppy trying to run, but he's not gonna kill anybody. Nobody cares on the AEI squad here. They're gonna just focus on double Booja travel. And what you're gonna do? Vacuum is gonna be on top. They just don't know you enough. GG gets a kill. I died a little bit inside. I, I want to. I want to go over his replay. I think there's so many mistakes, but the three mistakes. The one mistake I want to talk about that repeated itself was boots travel. That lost in the game. They they don't even use it properly. This is actually is so frustrating. The fact that they bought a boots travel and they lost because of the boots travel. They lost two team fights. Both team fights. The, the girl had no boots travel. He used it, and there was some cooldown, and they fought with the boots travel. They didn't factor that in, and the girl was not there in the fight both times. There was the first fight was at the Radiant Ancients, where the girl ran from top to middle, and then he came in late, and he afterwards he died afterwards. And the second one was when they got the Aegis, and Lycan got the Aegis for some reason instead of the Jarl, and they went middle of it, whereas Jarl will TP top with the Blizzard Travel. And then once again, they all died middle, and then Jarl came in late, and he died too. And now the last, the last most important engagement where they're getting thrown. The girl with TP's mid with a freaking boost travel. He has no boost travel, he didn't show up one time to kill the illusions. And he's the only hero in the in their entire team that can deal with the illusions. So it's the fact that Boots Travel was constantly in cooldown and never making it to the fights, never making it back to defend the base in this particular situation, that got them to lose the game. Yeah. They they did not factor in the boots travel that Dana Toss factored in themselves. Like they were like, okay, he just bots. Let's go do stuff. Whereas Navi is like, okay, we just bots. Let's go do stuff. Or Jarl's not there. Like, right. it, it's it's weird. But in the end, the opponent used your item better than you did against you. And it's I, I, I guess we can just, just trust me on this or you just go back and look at the freaking cooldown. I, but well, every fight that Boots Travel was on cooldown. And he did not show up every time. Well, you do see that Havos is trying to get the Divine to, to win the game. He's got the Sacred Relic on him, but... I mean, even with the Divine, I'm not absolutely positive where Navi could win the game. If they push it up to your, your Tier 3 Raxes, Navi could force a fight there and perhaps win right there. But the split push is just so damn annoying. And yeah, it's like you said, during that mid game, you were kind of questioning about Navi. Why are they not TPing here? Where's the TP? Where's the Ancient stack? It just seems like Navi, even though they're perhaps even play better during the mid game, they just succumb to the Sekuchi, uh, succumb to the multiple pushing coming out from uh, Naga Siren and once he got the Radiance it was one of the latest Radiance too like he just say, straight up rushed for it it wasn't a quick time but once you got it it was just like well here goes it was my a disaster career. yeah like Na Navi the most the most experienced team possibly in the world right like it, it, for the western side at least the western exactly. side yeah yeah they they played against a weird lineup they have never seen before and um, they played themselves a really weird lineup and because there's too many weird shit happening, they didn't play their game. Yeah, and, well, I'm not sure whether I want to blame the draft a little bit too, but, like, what does Ancient Apparition do here? They, they it didn't do anything in this yeah, game. Like, it doesn't feel like a dandy hero where it has high impact in the game, 
uh, like you talked about Queen of Pain being a hero that could, for example, scythe up. Ancient Apparition is also a very poor hero defending pushes. I mean, he has Ice Blast, but if he's not, for example, like an Invoker that could clear the creep waves very quickly. He's not a Queen of Pain, so... And only that, because, uh, like, poor split pushing is, it's, it's a pretty complicated thing, but part of it is the ability to not die. If you TP over Dragon, if you TP over Queen of Pain, you, you can farm out, you can push out a lane and not be scared, but if you push out a lane with AA and there's a fucking Naga there with a Diffusal Blade, you, you just die, right? Right. You, you can't do it alone. At least, at least with a quad, you can blink to dodge a net, you can, you can go scepter and then walk away or something, and then blink away, but he's just useless. Yeah. It, it is not him. It's not the player. It's just the draft. Yeah. But even then, I truly believe that their draft, they had a plan, and that plan could have been done. But then, because they didn't react properly to Danatos' plan, they just start panicking. And they didn't play right. There's so many weird things that happen in this game, like especially that mid when they went for the the mid tower instead of the, the um no, no the top, I think it was instead of defending the bottom racks, and then the reaver just kills the racks. And Aegis was spawning in like 30 seconds before they pushed top, and AUI was killing their mid racks as well. Like why didn't they just TP back, defend both racks, push it out, and then get the Aegis and then repeat? There's there's so many there's so many problems. I think. Yeah, it definitely felt like it didn't seem like the Navi that was playing so well back in TI2, the winner bracket, the finals. It, it I don't think they are near uh, the tip top performance they need to be to uh, beat a lot of these teams. So Dignitas knocks Navi out of Dreamhack and they will move on and keep playing. I do believe they play in Lions next. But again, I'm not sure what I'm going to be casting more Dreamhack. Please, uh, if there is more epic games, please let us know. I, I do believe these are pretty much all of the epic games. And of course, I want to. Extend a huge thanks to Eternal Envy, who's been joining me for all of these casts. If you want to follow his stream as well as his Twitter, I'll leave it on the comment section, or I'll leave it on the info box below. Any final words before we uh, turn this one off? I, I, I just think it's uh, really weird how Navi, the team that plays really weird Dota, and they try to make their game as weird as possible, and because of their experience, because of their ability to adapt, and their ability to be clutch as hell, like Puppy's clutch, Dun Denny's really clutch. They play these like Juggernaut, PI2, counter, counter Naga, Juggernaut strats, or like all these random stuff that you don't see much, their picks are weird. And they just play it clean, they play it good. But now, they, in a weird game, they just, they just can't, they couldn't deal with how they used to play. We're yeah. just good at weird Dota. The strength did not factor out, at least in this game, and well, there you go, the replay even ends, so. That's it. Hope you guys enjoyed all of the DreamHack replay coverage. And until next time, this is Eternal Envy and Luminous signing off to you guys.